Fahim, in this unit, what we're going to be looking at or what we're going to be asking ourselves is this. What if there are two objects moving at different speeds? And by the end of the year, when you've learned a lot of physics, that will be your trigger to know that we are in the relativity, relative motion unit. There's going to be two objects moving at different speeds. Then, Braden, you'll know, oh, that's, that's, that's this topic. And one of the things that you can write right next to where it says lesson one relative speed, and I'll repeat it later, but for all of this unit, we're going to decide that A is zero. We're not going to speed up or slow down. We could deal with that, but I just did a whole unit with you on kinematics and acceleration. We're not going to worry about it. So what does that mean? Well, I guess that means, for example, oh, wrong button, Mr. Newick, this one here. If A is zero, what's zero times T squared times a half? I guess that's going to modify that equation for this unit just to that. And in fact, since you're not speeding up or slowing down, your initial is your final, is your middle. I often don't even bother putting the I there. Or you'll have, well, if A is zero, what we're really saying is your initial and your final velocities are just going to be the same. So any of the equations that we've done that have an A in them, it's going to be zero. We'll talk about that in more detail. And again, your trigger, Scott, is going to be, we got two objects moving at different speeds. Let's put on our thinking caps. So relative speed. Or what happens when there's more than one moving object? We're going to start out looking at relative velocity. We're going to look at the concept of direction, of whether it's positive or negative. And then after a little bit, we're going to say, you know what, we don't care about the direction, we just care about the magnitude. So read along with me, it says this. Suppose you're driving down the freeway and your speedometer is reading 100 kilometers per hour. A Ferrari hurdles by you, its speedometer is reading 180 kilometers per hour. Okay. And... Suppose there was a tow truck parked at rest beside the freeway. I'm going to use F for Ferrari, T for tow truck, and Y for U. Okay. What would the tow truck see? First of all, what's the velocity of U relative to the tow truck? Well, I don't want to have to write out velocity of me relative to the tow truck. So we're going to abbreviate. We're going to write it as the velocity of u relative to the tow truck. That's going to be our abbreviate for this unit. So I'd like you to imagine that you're sitting in the tow truck. What would the tow, well, let's imagine that you're the tow truck driver. What would the tow truck driver see when they see you? Well, first of all, when you're behind them in their rear view mirror, they see your headlights getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And then zoom, as you zip past, they see your taillights getting further and further and further and further away. So as far as they are concerned, you're traveling forwards because they saw your headlights get closer in the rear view mirror and they saw your taillights get further away once you were in front of them. So we're going to say that they see you traveling positive. How fast do they see you traveling at magnitude wise? This isn't a big surprise. They see you go zipping past at positive 100 kilometers per hour. This is what most of you are used to because Aiden, most of the time when we do speeds and velocities, we assume the object that we're peering out from is at rest, like the tow truck. Uh, what about the velocity of the Ferrari? Well, the velocity of the Ferrari relative to the tow truck would be positive 180 kilometers per hour. That's hopefully not that big a surprise. But now, now, Cohen, let's look at two moving objects. What would you see? So imagine you're in your car. How fast are you traveling at, according to this setup? 100. How fast do you see the Ferrari traveling relative to you? You don't see it traveling at 180. Why not? Because you're already traveling at 100. How fast is the Ferrari traveling relative to you? Yeah. 
80. Which direction? Well, if the Ferrari is behind you, much like the tow truck driver, in your rear view mirror, you see the headlights getting closer and closer and closer and closer, zoom. And then as it is in front of you, you see the taillights getting further and further. So as far as you're concerned, the Ferrari is traveling forwards. So the velocity of the Ferrari relative to you would be positive 80 kilometers per hour. I wrote why. I, I hope just the explanation that we've done verbally is okay. I'm not going to write out an explanation. But you're both moving at different speeds, different velocities. What about the tow truck relative to you? Okay, so now here's what we're going to imagine. Claudie, we're going to imagine in your car, you're at rest and the earth is rotating around you. So what do you see? You see the tow truck way in front of you. You see its taillights getting closer and closer and closer, zoom. And then as you zip past it, sorry, as it goes zipping past you, because you're pretending you're at rest, you see its headlights going further and further and further away. Which way is the tow truck traveling relative to you? Forwards or backwards? You see it? Imagine you're in your car, and even though you're doing 100, just pretend that you're the one that's at rest and the earth is spinning underneath your tires. You would see the tow truck, the back wheels, the rear wheels, the taillights, getting closer and closer and closer. And then after it passed you, you would see the headlights retreating. As far as you're concerned, is the tow truck traveling forwards or backwards relative to you? A little tough to imagine. Yeah, Keisha, you're right. Backwards. Because you see its, its taillights getting closer when you're looking forwards. And then you see its headlights getting further as you're looking backwards, as though it was traveling in reverse. Now you might say, but Mr. Duick, it's not traveling in reverse. I'm traveling forwards. There is no correct answer for that. Einstein showed that it is just as valid to say that you're at rest and the earth is spinning underneath your tires. So you would see the velocity of the tow truck relative to you as negative 100 kilometers per hour. Magnitude, because 100, because there's a 100 kilometer per hour difference between your speeds. Why backwards? You have to use your imagination, but you would see the taillights getting closer as though it was backing up, and then you'd see the headlights retreating as though it was still backing up. What about the Ferrari? What does the Ferrari see? What's the speed of you relative to the Ferrari? What is the velocity of you relative to the Ferrari. Well, again, as far as the Ferrari is concerned, Fahim, it's standing still and the earth is spinning underneath its tires. It sees your taillights getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, zoom, and then it sees your headlights retreating in the distance when it looks in its rear view mirror. What direction does the Ferrari think you are traveling relative to the Ferrari, forwards or backwards? Acacia. Backwards again. And so it feels that you have a negative 80 kilometers per hour velocity. And as far as the Ferrari is concerned, the tow truck relative to the Ferrari is negative 180 kilometers per hour. You kind of have to use your imagination and imagine the earth spinning underneath the Ferrari's tires while it's staying at rest, but that is a perfectly valid physics interpretation of what's going on. I wrote down here, Mr. Duick, is there a short way to write this? I already showed you the short way to write this. It's the arrows because I'm too lazy to do it the long way and then a brief. So you don't perceive the Ferrari to be moving at 180 kilometers per hour. You see it moving at 80 kilometers per hour relative to you. The relative velocity of any moving object depends on your point of view, or as Einstein liked to call it, frame of reference, your reference frame. You see the car moving away at 80 kilometers per hour, but the other driver sees you moving backwards at 80 kilometers per hour. Put your pencils down, look up. Right, here's a classic one. Of 
course, it works better if my computer opens the video right away. You might have thought the train was moving. It was in one reference frame relative to the platform, but actually the platform was moving relative to the train. Each of those is correct. Next page over. You might have experienced this if you've ever walked on one of those moving walkways at an airport. Maybe you ever walked on one of those moving walkways somewhere at an airport or something like that. Okay, And then you notice if you walk at your normal speed on the walkway, when you look at the ground next to you, relative to the ground, you're going way faster, even though relative to the walkway, you're not. Example one says, what is the velocity of the train passenger relative to the observer on the ground in each case? What is the relative velocity? My abbreviation for relative velocity is VREL, V-R-E-L. Okay. How fast does that person on the ground see the person with the little sack moving? I'll give you a hint. Not 1.2 and not 15. How fast does the person on the ground see the person on the train moving? Yeah. Sorry? In this one here? I disagree with 13.8. Yeah. I think 16.2 because they're both in the same direction. Okay. I think... Uh, but, but, Amelia, what, 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 about, what about this second diagram where the person is walking in the opposite direction of the train? How fast will the person on the ground see this person traveling? What's its relative speed? Um, question for you. Let's suppose instead of a person, we had a baseball cannon. And we fired the baseball cannon this way at 15 meters per second. How fast would the baseball be traveling relative to the person on the ground if the train is moving forwards at 15 meters per second and we fire the baseball backwards at 15 meters per second? How fast will the baseball be traveling relative to the ground? Put your pencils down, look up. I have a feeling that we are very close to a perfect demonstration. So this is a video from Mythbusters a few years ago. The backstory is this particular situation turned out to be far more difficult to rig than they expected. I think this was their third day, and this was near sundown of the third day. They're getting pretty tired because they just haven't been able to dial things in correctly, but this time they nail it. So what they're going to be doing is they're going to be traveling a pickup truck going forwards at 60 miles an hour and firing a soccer ball backwards at 60 miles an hour from a cannon. What will happen? Yeah. We're going to see that ball drop. If the forward and backward momentum matched as close as they're going to get it, the pressure's on Grant for a perfect release. I don't know about you guys, but that looked pretty good to me. Let's check the high speed. It really looked good to the naked eye, but the judge in this case is the high speed. Oh my god, it's like a, it's like a cartoon. <laughs> it's just in the air, it stops, and it just falls. Look at that. Fantastic. I mean, look, it, it doesn't move at all. It's going straight down. What? Relative to us, the ball has a velocity of zero, because we're standing on the ground relative to the camera. Relative to the truck, the ball had a velocity of negative 60, because it was going backwards relative to the truck. But relative to us, zero. Yeah, 
So if this person walked backwards at 15 meters per second, to the person on the ground, it would appear as though they were standing still, staying in the same place. Example two, a zebra is running away at 50 kilometers per hour from a cheetah going at 90 kilometers per hour. What velocity does the zebra see the cheetah having and vice versa? So what is the velocity of the cheetah relative to the zebra? Well, I'd like you to imagine that you're the zebra. Is the cheetah in front of you or behind you? In this question, is the cheetah in front of you or behind you? Behind you. Okay. So let's imagine you got a rear view mirror. When you look in your rear view mirror, you see the front part of the cheetah getting closer and closer and closer. Because you see the front part getting closer and closer and closer, as far as you're concerned, the cheetah is coming forwards. It's got a positive velocity because its head is getting closer and closer and closer to you from behind. What? 40. What about the relative velocity of the zebra to the cheetah? Well, now imagine you're the cheetah. What you see is the hindquarters of the zebra getting closer and closer and closer and closer. So as far as you're concerned, the zebra is walking backwards towards you. The zebra is walking backwards, negative. How fast? Same answer, same magnitude. 40. Okay. I like example C, I like example C, I like example C, example C is a nice question. Suppose the zebra starts out 90 meters ahead. How long will it take until the cheetah catches up? Note, for all relative velocity questions, we can assume that A equals what? Zero. So let's make a note. Okay. What's this question asking me to find? time. And now things are going to shift a little bit. In this question, is there more than one object moving at different speeds? This is going to be a job for relative speed. We're not going to use V, we're going to use V rel, which is 40 kilometers per hour. Positive or negative, I'm not going to be too fussy. What else did this question tell me, Sophie? There's something, I see another number. Okay. What is the displacement? What is the displacement? 90 what? My units don't match. See kilometers per hour and meters. So we need to do a conversion. We could convert this to kilometers. You know what? I think I'd rather convert this to meters per second. It's something to do with the 3.6. Is it times by 3.6 or divide? I can't remember. Divide by 3.6? I'm going to write 11.1, .1, but I'm going to store this on my calculator. Well, I'm looking for an equation with a T, a D, a V, and an A in it. It's this one. Don't write this down. Don't write this down. Except, what's A? So, and you know what? Instead of that, that's what we're going to use. Write that one down. The equation we're going to use for today's lesson is D equals V rel times T. Why V rel? Because there's more than one object moving at different speeds. It's much easier just to pretend one of them is at rest and the other one is moving. Oh, and A is going to be zero. Sophie, how would I get the T by itself? Yep. So it's going to be 90 divided by, uh, I'm going to write 11.1, .1, but I'm going to use my answer button. And I get exactly 8.1 seconds. Yes? 
if you use your answer button. What does that mean? This actually happens all the time. If shelter and safety is eight seconds away, the zebra is safe. If shelter and safety is 8.2 seconds away, the zebra is lunch. And believe it or not, animals do this intuitively all the time. If you watch nature shows, you will see an adult zebra has a pretty good idea of how fast, for example, a cheetah can travel and for how long. And as the cheetah is getting closer and closer, they're relaxed. As it gets closer, they're starting to do the calculation, how far, and they start to get a bit more nervous. And I'm going to run at the last possible time. A zebra does not want to run too soon because that's wasted energy. If you're an animal that panics all the time, you probably won't make it to adulthood because you'll be starving all the time because you're burning too much energy and there's a limited food source. So you want to always be right on the balancing point of safety with minimal effort. Zebras and animals do this calculation. There's the math. Next page. Nick and Cole are having an argument at an airport on a windy day. Nick says airplanes should take off with the wind so that the wind is pushing them from behind. That way the planes can travel faster on the one runway. Cole says that airplanes should take off facing into the wind. He's not sure why, but it makes sense to him. Who is correct? Should airplanes take off with the wind pushing them from behind? Or should airplanes take off with the wind in their face? Usually I ask, is anybody here in the process of getting their pilot's license or interested in getting their pilot's license? Yeah. Take off with the wind facing them, like into the wind? Why would they do that? First of all, the way an airplane flies, it needs a certain speed through the air. If you're facing into the wind and the wind is blowing, let's say, at 10 meters per second, that means while your plane is at rest, it's already traveling at 10 meters per second through the air. So you only have to reach a certain ground speed and you'll be able to lift off even sooner because you've already, while you're at rest, going 10 meters per second. So who is correct? Absolutely, Cole is. We always take off through the air. Let's suppose that your takeoff airspeed needs to be 50 meters per second. And let's suppose the wind going past you is at 49 meters per second. You're almost ready to take off. Here's somebody who made a very, very, very expensive mistake. So what you can't tell is the wind is blowing to your left, from the right of the screen to the left of the screen. The wind is blowing in this direction, and it's almost takeoff speed wind. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here is a really expensive and dumb mistake. I guarantee if you go by Pitt Airport on a windy day, planes, planes are staked to the ground. They do that on purpose. They stake them down. Oh, and you also point the tail towards the wind if you can. If you know there's a big windstorm coming, point the tail towards the wind. Thank you very much. Or get it in a hangar. But if you're stuck outside, you stake it down. Okay. How fast was that plane going relative to the ground? Everybody? Zero. How fast was it going relative to the air? Takeoff speed. Takeoff speed. So what is the speed of the airplane relative to the ground? You already answered this. Zero meters per second. What was the speed relative to the wind? Maddie, we're going to ease up a little bit. Up until now, I've been talking about velocities. I've been using negatives and positives. For the rest of this lesson, we're going to say we don't care about the negative and positive. We don't care about the velocity. We just care about the speed, the magnitude. So don't concern yourself with, what well, was it traveling forwards or backwards, technically? We just want the magnitude. 
So for the rest of this lesson, we're going to concern ourselves with relative speed, not velocity. We're not going to care about positive or negative signs. However, acceleration is always going to equal zero if you see that there are two moving objects that are moving at different speeds. Could we handle two different accelerations? Yeah. If you're bored sometime, I can show you. It gets ugly, and it's just, it's not that interesting. So example four says, state the relative speed in each case. So here I have two trains. One is going 40 kilometers per hour to the right. The other one is going 40 kilometers per hour to the right relative to each other. What is their relative? Oh, I got a spot there. Never mind. What is the relative speed here? If they're both going at the same speed, as far as they're concerned, how fast are they traveling relative to each other? I don't know what that means. Zero. Yeah, zero. Uh, what about this uh, second one here, where one is traveling at 20 and one is traveling at 40? Relative to each other, what's their relative speed? Sorry? I heard someone say it. 20. What's the relative speed of these ones if they're coming head on? Give you a hint, it's not 20. What do you think? What do you think? Now, 60. By the way, what's worse, a head on collision? Or a rear-end collision, what's what's going to do more damage in a car crash, head-on or rear-end? Why? Because it's relative speed, stupid. Yeah, they combine. You add them. Here, subtract them. In fact, the well, we'll see if we can come up with a basic rule. I'd like you to imagine you're at an airport. Oh, no, no, sorry. Example five. I like example five. I like example five. Example five is a nice question. Example five has two trains one is traveling at 13 meters per second, one is traveling at 5 meters per second, and it asks, how long does it take these trains to completely pass each other? This might seem difficult because two trains are moving at different speeds. No, 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 Zena, we're going to use relative speed. We're going to pretend one train is at rest, and we're just going to use the relative speed. First of all, how long? What's this question asking me to find? Yeah, by the way, how do I know it's probably not distance? Because they gave me some in the question. Good. Okay, so I wrote down here, key question, are there two different objects moving at different speeds? This is a job for relative speed. So you told me we're going to ask to find time. I agree. I would like to find the relative speed. Are they traveling in the same direction or are they traveling? Yes. So what's the relative speed? I'll give you a hint. It's not 13 or 5. What's the relative speed between these two trains? What do you think? Yeah, sorry? Uh, 18 or 8, which one? Here's how you can remember. What's worse, head-on collisions or rear-end collisions? Head-on collisions are way... So head-on would be 18. Here, what? 8, good. Okay. Oh, A is 0. What else? Well, here's my argument, Zena. I'm going to argue that for this train to pass this train, the back of the train has to get all the way up to the front of the train. And I know they're both moving, but I'm pretending that one is at rest. I'm ignoring that the earth is moving. I'm, the, I'm just focusing on them. So as far as I'm concerned, the distance the faster train has to travel is 150 plus 100. Or in your head? Yeah. I'm looking for an equation that has a D, a V, an A, and a T in it. There is one. It's D equals V, I, T plus a half A, T squared. But since A is 0, we've modified it slightly. We've said for this unit, it's just that. As far as I'm concerned, I can give you any two of those, and you can find the third. 
So I can give you the distance and the time, you can find the relative speed. I can give you the speed and the time, and you can find the distance. I can give you, in this case, the speed and the distance. We'll find time. How would I get the t by itself, see? This is why I taught you this. Otherwise, I'd have to give you even more equations. So it's going to be 250 divided by 8, which is what? Well. 31.25, so I'll go to three sig figs, I'll go 31.3 seconds. Okay, so I like that question, I like that question, I like that question. Example three. Those of you that have walked on one of those moving walkways, this will help if you've done that. As you hurry to catch your flight at the local airport, you encounter a moving walkway the walkway is 85 meters long, and it has a speed of 2.2 meters per second relative to the ground. If it takes you 68 seconds to cover 85 meters when walking on the ground at constant speed, what's your walking speed? Now, we're ignoring the walkway. This is still just one person, but we did say that A is going to be zero. This wants us to find the V of the person. Braden, what's the distance mentioned in part A? And what else did they give me in part A? So time. I can find out my walking speed. It's going to be D equals VTS plus a half AT squared, but what's A in this case? So we're not going to bother writing it. How would I get the V by itself, my friend? How will I move the T over? I want to get the V by itself. I would I divide the T over, right? Yeah, D over T. So it's going to be 85 divided by 68. Good. And I get my walking speed is 1.25 meters per second. That's when I'm just walking on non-moving ground relative to the ground. Okay. So, how long will it take me to cover 85 meters on the walkway? Ooh. Huh. Holy, what's this at? What's part two asking me to find? Yep. And it looks like D is 85. Am I on the walkway now? In part two? So are there two objects moving at different speeds? This is a job for relative speed. Now I'm going to use VREL. So here's the question. When I'm walking on the ground, I travel at 1.25. How fast is the walkway moving? It's up there somewhere. 2.2. Am I going to add these or subtract these? If I'm walking on the walkway, does that make me speed up relative to the ground or slow down relative to the ground? So I'm going to add them. My new relative speed relative to the ground is uh, 4.45. Is that right? OK. I guess I'm going to again use D equals VREL times T. Isn't it 3.45? Of course it's 3.45 because I can't add. Should have used my calculator. Thank you. I owe you a candy. Uh, Clody, what are we trying to find? Yeah. Is it starting to become a little bit repetitive? I hope you're starting to notice that. OK, good, 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 good. So I think I can say time is going to be D over V. Which V? Now there's two objects moving, so V rel. It's going to be 85 divided by 3.45. Now how many seconds will it take me? Twenty-four point six. How many seconds did it take me originally? Sixty-eight according to part A. So I've saved some time. 
And b- by the way, that's why the airports build those. Please don't think the airports built those because you're tired. And oh, they want to help you so you can just stand and rest because oh, you're so tired coming off. No, 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 no. The shorter they can make your trip, planes make no, airports make no money when you're on the ground. They make money when you're in the air. The faster they can get you to your next flight, your connecting flight, this allows them to get more flights out per hour. This is a money maker investment for them. What was it? 68 seconds minus that. That's 44 seconds, 43 seconds that I'm not wasting their money. That's why they put them in. How many of you have ever been on one of those walkways before? Raise your hand, nice and high. Okay. How many of you, when you're on the walkway, turned around and walked in the opposite direction? Okay, I know my audience. So B, suppose you get on the walkway and you turn around and you start walking in the opposite direction. And if you're not at a crowded airport, I do encourage you next time, try this. It's really neat. So now you're moving up the walkway, but you're facing backwards. Got the vision? What's your new speed relative to the ground? Well, Clody, this time, is the walkway speeding you up or slowing you down? So we're going to go bigger minus smaller. 2.2 minus 1.25. I'll use a calculator because I botched it last time, but I hope it's 0.95. Woohoo! I got that one in my head after all. So, walking backwards the whole length of this walkway, how long will it take you to cover the 85 meters? Clody, I'm going to take a gamble. I'm not going to rewrite everything out because it's so similar to the question you and I did. I think we can go, again go T equals D over V rel. Yeah? And the D is still 85. But walking backwards, Clody, what's the relative speed? Not 3.45, but what instead? Yeah. And I get 89.5 seconds. Take you longer. Okay. I like example four, I like example four, I like example four. Example four is a nice question. Fahim, what's example four want me to find? Do me a favor, all of you, cross out the word velocity. We're going to find a speed. We're not going to worry about direction here. Just going to get a magnitude. Okay. Fahim, in this question, is there more than one object moving at different speeds? We're not going to find the police car's speed. We're going to find the relative speed. So I'm going to write this. VREL equals question mark. A is still zero. Fahim, what's that 320? I know there's a 150, but I'm going to temporarily ignore that right now. That's not what I'm interested in. That's, that's not the answer, and that's a velocity. Um, that 20, what's that? You know what, Fahim? I think it's our old friend D equals V rel times T, which is D equals VIT plus a half AT squared in disguise when A is zero and more than one object is moving. What do they want us to find? How would I get that by itself? So it's going to be 320 divided by 20. 16, I think. Sixteen. What? Units. Okay. Now, 
that's the relative speed. Here's what that means. That's how much faster the police have to be going than the bad guys. How much faster? 16 meters per second faster. How fast are the bad guys going, Fahim? So can I go 150 plus 16? Is that the answer? Why not? Verizon. The units don't match. So because they gave me the bad guy speed in kilometers per hour, I'm going to put an equals, and I'm going to convert this 16 to kilometers per hour. It's something to do with a 3.6 times your divide. Okay, so the police have to be going 57.6 kilometers per hour faster than the bad guys. Now I can solve. V police is going to be... How can I figure out how fast the police have to go then, Fahim? Yeah. The bad guys were going 150. The police have to be going 57.6 faster. So really what I did in this question at the beginning, I ignored that 150. I said, let's pretend the bad guys are at rest. Let's find a relative speed. Then we'll translate it back into the frame of reference. Police have to be going 207.6. I'll call it 208 kilometers per hour. Okay. By the way, when police are driving in traffic and they have their radar detectors on and the radar is bouncing off of a car in front of them, it's doing something very similar, but instead it's reversing this procedure and it's solving for that number. That's how they can figure out how fast the oncoming car is coming. Okay. It's a similar calculation. though. So what's the short version? If they're traveling in the same direction, that was the 8 Zena that you got with the train at 13 and at 5 going in the same direction. If they're traveling in opposite directions, either towards each other or away from each other, well, towards each other, I know head-on collisions are worse. You add the speeds together. And same with away from each other. Bigger plus smaller. Okay. We talked about how airplanes take off. Airplanes need to be traveling through the air at takeoff speed. This one's pretty cool. So this is a hang glider. And the wind is, let me go like this. I've got it muted because the wind is really loud. The wind is blowing from the left to the right. And it's almost at takeoff speed. Really close to takeoff speed. Relative to the ground, the glider is basically at rest. Relative to the wind, the glider is at takeoff speed. For it, for it. This motorcycle rider owes his life to relative velocity. This is a very stupid motorcycle driver. This is one of those dashboard, uh, dash cam videos from Russia. <laughs> but you want to keep your eye on this car right here. In about 10 seconds, it's going to be a really good chance. Keep your eye on this car right here. Wait for it. Five, four, three, two, one. How fast was the motorcycle driver traveling relative to that car? Zero. If he had not been traveling at exactly the same speed relative to that car, he's going over the front or coming off the back and he's not surviving. Um, have eventually I jumped out of an airplane? I jumped out of an airplane. I mentioned that? I hope I have. When I jumped out of an airplane, 
I achieved terminal velocity. I was falling through the air. The air was going past me so fast that I was no longer accelerating. Now that was me moving through the air. Scott, there's another way you can achieve terminal velocity. Instead of moving your body through the air, you can move the air past your body. Put your pencils down, look up. So this is indoor skydiving. Instead of them moving through the air, there's a big fan pushing the air past them. But they are at terminal velocity relative to the air. And they've obviously practiced quite a bit. This is from the World Championships a few years ago. This is the sport. This group finished second. So another neat example of relative speed. Relative to us, they were at rest, but relative to the wind, they were hitting terminal velocity because the wind was moving past them. What's your homework? You can assume A is zero for all of these questions. You'll probably have to do these on a separate piece of paper. I'm going to assign most of these. So number one is good. Number two is good. Three is good. Four is good. Yeah, five is good. Six is good. Seven is good. I like eight. I like nine, ten, eleven. I think I am going to assign all of these. Yep, twelve. Okay.